Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths from Power Systems and I've been working with Alice Keating Withers on this new tool from the Power SC team, Real-Time Compliance. Very easy to use, very easy to set up and to change to your requirements. So what's all this about real-time? Well, instead of waiting for a yearly audit or perhaps scripts to come around on a regular basis to check your security, here we get alerts of security mistakes or a genuine hacker on your machine changing things the second it happens so that you can react immediately and do something about it to limit the damage. As with all the PowerSC products, these are nicely documented in the brand new red book. Don't get distracted by the name of this red book, it's all about PowerSC. Chapter 4 covers our real time compliance. We add a couple of little things in this movie about uh, we don't like the use of Smitty and we're going to detail the information levels. Just a little note that the real time compliance comes with the Power SC Express Edition. Its price is based upon the number of CPUs and the size of the machine. Let's look at the prerequisites for installing it. First, we need AX6 TL7 or AX7 TL1 or above. Please don't forget to put all the current service packs in here. You need to purchase the PowerSC Express Edition or the Standard Edition, it includes it too, and you'll get the media. Or alternatively, you can download the latest version from the Entitled Software Support website. You'll have to prove that you're the owner of a particular serial number machine and entitled to the software. For the alerting, it'll either appear as email or SNMP traps. If you're using email, it's assuming that email is working on the machine on which you're running RTC. Uh, of course, if you haven't got that, you'll have some fun with SendMail. Of course, email these days means that the messages can be sent to tablets and smartphones, as well as your service desk or group of operators. Alternatively, we could be using the SNMP traps. We're assuming here that you already have SNMP server running, ready to catch these things. Of course, it's quite often a systems management um, operation, so you will either have systems director or Tivoli or one of the equivalents, and they're quite happy to take SNMP traps, add that to their, their problem management system, and alerting you that way. We've actually downloaded the standard edition, which includes the express edition features. This is the big file name you get when you download it. Inside this, we're going to find the PowerSC Express RTC. When you go to install P, it actually lists out the real-time compliance component 1.1.2. Of course, this is the first release. Yours may be a high number. We'll very quickly show you how to do the install. We've taken that file and we've uh, unzipped it and untied it. Uh, the files went into this install P and user directory. We're actually doing it in slash home, not particularly pretty. And um, we'll just use smitty install p to install that. So install software, use a, a dot character for the current directory. We'll do um, escape full. We'll get a list of the packages. And we'll pop down to the right one. There it is. This is the PowerSC Express dot RTC. And it says real time compliance just underneath. So we'll do the uh, escape 7 to highlight that one and return and we'll just pop down the bottom here to do the accept new license uh, tab to switch that and then we hit return and confirm and it's done now it's very quick very little software has actually been added that's because the the bulk of the services it needs to actually get the alerts is already installed with this version of uh, AirX RTC is built around this thing called the Autonomic Health Advisor File System. This is part of AIX at these releases. And later on, PowerHA and Clusteraware AIX and Shared Storage Pools all build on this uh, infrastructure. What happens is when the kernel actually makes a change to the file system, it notices that this is being monitored and immediately takes the action. There's no polling or scripting or cron jobs running later on. It's absolutely immediate as it happens. Now we can configure this with Smitty RTC and uh, give it some of the details that we want to set. Now the problem is if we go back into Smitty RTC later on, it forgets the current settings and you're back to the defaults. So you have to type them in again. At the end of the day, it only changes this rtcd.conf file, so you might as well just change it. And it has some comments in there so you can understand what's going on. It uses the system resource controller to run this subsystem, so the standard start, src, list, stop, start all work as we expect you to already know. 
So we're logged in as root and we use smitty rct. Um, it can't find it because it has to be uppercase. So we'll try again with smitty rtc. And in we go, we can configure and unconfigure. We do a configure, we can type in the email address as a list of comma separated. Um, the alert level, we'll look at that in a moment. And some other bits and pieces, the um, subject, for example, of the email. So you can make sure you understand where they're coming from. Problem with this is that if we can set this up and then come out of it and come back in, we get the same defaults in here. It doesn't remember what's going on. We also can't do the SNMP details in here. We have to go and edit the config file. And as the config file is very simple, we might as well just do that. So we'll come out of Smitty, make a window a bit bigger, and we'll edit that file. And it's etc. Security RTC rtcd.conf lots of helpful comments there's the usual um, copyright stuff at the top so we'll just ignore that down in here it has a, a little comment that's giving you an example of what you're meant to put in in our case we put alice at and our machine name here then we're going to put the subject matter in here that was an example in here is uh, power se with some alerts uh, we just put in danger to highlight it we have this level information in here it doesn't tell us what these levels are, we'll look at those in a second. Then further down, it's asking us um, what alert style we want. This once, I um, have to be careful with this one, it is the default. It will only tell you about something changing on the machine once. It won't keep on telling you every time it changes. Uh, we prefer the always, so we put in the alert style of always in here. Debugging on, we just thought so we'll have a look at uh, what was happening there. Further down there's a verbose uh, option, let's scroll up a bit, and uh, limited, this just cuts down the amount of uh, messages you're getting, and the limited it actually indicates the, uh, the uh, how many violations there have been, so it cuts down the amount of information you got. At the bottom here is the SNMP traps, so enabled or not, the host that's running the SNMP server, as a community and the OID. If you're into SNMP, you will understand what that means. We're just going to demonstrate the uh, email as it's uh, simple to get going. We already have the setup, so let's just come out of the editor and we'll start System Resource Controller Subsystem RTCD. And we're up and running. We can just check that. Let's clear the screen and we can do LS SRC S. Oh, and we can see we are active. Looks good. Let's go and test it. Well, I've logged on as Alice here as a regular user, the person that's going to receive the email. And if we do a quick mail X in here, we find we have one. Here's the uh, title we asked for. And if we just have a quick look at that, we can see we have uh, an event here that the real time compliance system has been started. Okay. Well, let's. Um, delete that one and uh, come out okay now let's make a change and see if we get email about it so let's as root go and change a, a file uh, pretend we're just a systems administrator doing some uh, cleanup so the etc environment file um, IBM loves putting the stuff at the top don't we let's just do a quick Delete of all this stuff on the top. It's a waste of time for normal systems administrators. And uh, we'll just save that file. Okay. Now, question is has Alice got any email? Whoa, she has indeed. Two in here. Have a look at the first one. In here, it's saying slash etc has been uh, modified. So here is the uh, modified file it was written to as we save the edit. This is actually a stack trace of the command used to actually do that. The command up here was vi, which well, is good to know what command was actually doing. And this is actually a stack trace. Now, if we have a program that is 
unexpectedly modifying the files that we're monitoring. Uh, this can help uh, at least the programmer work out well where in the program was he um, accidentally changing his file which was unexpected. That can help with the debugging. This is why we have um, service level 3, we get this extra information in here. We actually look at uh, the second one in here. This is saying again it's the VI and etc. Oh, it uh, truncated the file, so that operation, because it's smaller, actually did two things to the file, and both of those were spotted. Pretty impressive, and we'll find that these emails appear uh, pretty near instantaneously, as we did the exit out of the VI, um, then uh, we get these two email messages immediately. Of course, we're doing this on the same machine, so, but normally the email will go off to an operator somewhere else, and uh, be highlighted there. Let's have a look at those info levels that we set in our configuration. Info level 1 gives us the basic details, timestamp, sequence number, the uh, process involved in the program name. Level 2 gives you a bit more information about these things called event producers. I think these are for programs that are aware of the R file system and can supply some information about what they're trying to do. Level 3 then included the stack that we had a look at. This can be quite useful to prove that to the application developer that their program was the uh, culprit, uh, perhaps the application has been tricked into modifying a system file and that can really help them uh, find out what was happening and why. By default there's 278 files that it's monitoring and they're all defined in this file that we can go and edit if we like and change them is the rtcd underscore policy dot com file. We actually modified the etc environment so for its line it has two lines it has the actual file followed by colon on the next line it has event type and it has mod file this means that if the file is modified we generate the alert the alternative there is mod file atra with the attributes so if somebody changes the read write permissions for the file you can actually have both with a comma in between once you've finished your edits with that file then you have to restart the rtc daemon with the stop and start commands an alternative is you can make the modifications using the chut sec command. Um, this is a bit cumbersome, but if you're trying to remotely update or add entries to lots of machines, then it's easier to use remote commands. It also automatically starts the RTC daemon for you. So it could be useful. Okay, back to Alice's uh, email. And uh, what can we see in here? She's got two at the moment. Okay, we'll come quickly out of that. Okay, we'll clear the screen. LS minus L. Home. We have a file here called credit card list text file. That belongs to Alice, and nobody's allowed to read and write it. Okay, let's add that file to our list of files that are being monitored by RTC. Here's the policy file. We're we'll going to edit that. There's some comments at the top in here. And here are the uh, details of the options, the event type. And uh, we can see here the environment as an example. But I think we'll just put our new ones uh, down the bottom. So, uh, in good tradition, we'll just copy a few lines. So, yeah, dot mod file. We need to start and stop the demons. Interesting. It takes a while to stop, so let's do it deliberately. Stop. Ready. And we'll start it. Okay. Uh, lesson learned. We can't do that exactly one after the other. And we can do a. Uh, let's to check the state is active. Okay. Now that if somebody goes in and modifies that file, then we should get uh, some messages. So let's just check Alice's email. Oops, she's had a bunch of them there. So let's have a look at those. Number one. Ah, oh, now I've seen this before. This is real time compliance of regular checking. Uh, most events will be noted by the AHA file system, 
but there are some things like a new file being created that it hasn't already started logging yet that it can't do. So um, it goes around regularly, I think it's about every half an hour, uh, running a quick check, are there any other things that need monitoring. So there's one, let's have a look at uh, two. What have we got there? Oh, yes, it's saying that somebody VI'd the policy file. <laughs> okay, we were updating it. Number three. Um, somebody took the subsystem down. Okay. And four. Somebody started it back up again. Okay. This is all good stuff. And uh, you can see it actively monitoring things. Uh, now we'll actually uh, come out of that. And so she got no email left. And we'll actually modify the file and see if that uh, is noted. Let's do ls slash home and we're going to change perhaps uh, shirt mod um, user group other plus read access to that file. Okay. We got uh, a notification there, and we'll quickly read that file, and it's going to tell us, yep, home credit card list in here, had a chip mod, and we had a stack dump somewhere in the chip mod command that was actually involved with that, uh, if we quit out of there, we could also um, go and edit that file. Ha ha ha, full G. Okay, we'll go down to the, the bottom one file. That's oh, read only. Now uh, we'll root so we can probably force that out. Okay. Okay, we got another email. Quick look at that. There's the stack trace at the bottom, and yep, VI of the file modified right. New file out. Excellent. So we can monitor the attributes changing or the file changing. If you're an Oracle user, perhaps the init.ora file might be a good example. I was once involved with a very big crit sit until we realized somebody had changed it unexpectedly. So we'll finish with a quick summary. Alice and I had great fun uh, trying this. Pretty simple to implement and understand. You can extend it for your own local needs. I like the idea of creating a few trip wires, files that every hacker would just have to have a look inside and we can set up uh, lots of warnings if they do. I particularly like the feature that it's immediate warnings. So if it's an operator making a mistake, we can probably catch it before too much damage is done. If it's a hacker, we've got heads up, the guy's actually doing it now. We can do something about it. We do need to have a pre-prepared escalation process. What do you actually do? Shut the machine down, take it off the network. We could actually cause other damage with other running systems, so we need to prepare in advance.